Good morning, my name is James Alguire. I will be your tour guide on some of the new features of the Monterey operating system. We'll talk about some of the things you need to do to update first. Uh, my background, I am an Apple certified trainer. I have been certified on the Mac OS going all the way back to Mac OS 10.2. It was still called OS 10. Uh, I've been in the computer industry for well over 30 years. I've been a trainer for over 20. And I'm currently residing in beautiful Southern California in San Diego. I'm originally from Alaska, however. So that's a little bit about me and my experience. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, introduce yourselves to myself and everybody else in the room. Uh, just please uh, share your name, your organization, your role in the organization, where you are geographically, so I have an idea about where everybody's at, and one thing you'd like to learn from this webinar. We'll go ahead and start with uh, Charles. Yeah, my name is Charles. I'm French, but I'm at the moment in the States. And I work um, mainly in video for a um, nonprofit organization which is called the Moisture Festival. And I would like to learn from this webinar something like um, what's new in this new software and see what I can get from it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, that's good. Well, I, uh, in my notes, I have eight of the prominent features of um, Mac OS 12 uh, Monterey that we're going to talk about, and we'll do demonstrations of everything. I have very few slides once we get past um, this slide. There's only like two more, and then it's going to be mostly demonstration. All right, uh, Gerald. Got more people popping in. Uh, yes, hi, my name is uh, Gerald. Most people call me Jerry. Um, I work in Braintree, Massachusetts, which is um, a town outside of Boston. I work in a public access television studio and I've been working in public access since the late 90s. Um, and hmm. I kind of merged from a video shooter to a now video editor. And I'm just trying to keep updated with what uh, Apple is doing with their operating systems. Yeah, and they just upgraded um, both iMovie and Final Cut Pro in the last couple of days. Yeah, 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 so. Okay. Just trying to learn more. <laughs> Brian. Okay, we'll come back to Brian. Jeff. Hey, James, how are you? Um, so I'm based in, my name's Jeff Way. I uh, work for a company called Quantum. We do storage, we have a longstanding partnership with FMC um, as part of the uh, FCPX conference for the last five years or so. Um, <clears throat> Apple's a customer of mine. I'm in the sales side of things and uh, business development. Uh, and one thing I'd like to learn, um, just get my arms around Monterey so that uh, I'm, I'm up to speed. Um, having a formal presentation is helpful as opposed to kind of poking around and figuring it out on your own. Sure. All right. Uh, next up, let's talk to John. Yeah, hi, my name is John. I'm in Los Angeles. I teach part time down at Chapman University in Orange, uh, film and television production classes. And I use my laptop hooked up to their display screens down there. And Monterey is, I want to start learn more about what new features are in Monterey that are maybe not in previous versions. So that would be uh, very helpful to me. All right mostly what we'll be covering in this session today. All right, uh, KT. Hi, I'm in uh, Washington DC area. 
and um, I actually just checked my operating system and I've been procrastinating on updating and so I'm still on 10 and so I'm interested in knowing what's new and fabulous. Excellent. We always want to know what's new and fabulous. Larry. How you doing? Larry Hansen, Milwaukee, Wisconsin area. I'm audio video production company. Primarily I use uh, Pre, uh, Premiere Pro and Pro Tools. I'm just checking out to see if uh, Monterey is compatible uh, with those systems now. So sometimes Pro Tools lags a little bit, uh, you know, before they get up to speed. So it's pretty much true of most of the major software outside of Apple, unless they've been part of the beta and they release shortly after Apple releases. Right. Cool. All right. Naomi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Naomi Howard. I'm healing from the island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. Um, I work for the University of the West Indies. Um, my role there right now is content um, and operations manager. Um, the area I mostly focus on is multimedia um, stuff. So from editing to art installations, that's what I'm responsible for and do. So um, the reason why I'm here is I need to, well, I would like to learn as much as I can on this new OS and what it has to offer. So yeah. So, yeah. All right. Let's see. So, James, go ahead and introduce yourself. Oh. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. I had to switch from my phone to a laptop here. <laughs> so no worries uh, having having hijacked your your uh presentation here already uh, my name is jim carroza i'm with rockefeller university um i am audiovisual support and engineering uh uh staff at the university in the it department um in new york city and uh, i am very interested in learning more about um mac um you know operating system uh compatibility with you know not only video editing and uh, you know this type of uh, media production but um you know we run into some issues where uh in our presentation systems that uh you know we have what seems to be hdcp or other types of uh, issues that i think are related to um some of the security protocols that apple is implementing on their later uh operating system updates so yeah and there are issues with uh, some of the newer hdmi protocols as well um, i've run into issues with older cables too. on on newer um plugs and ports and that can be a problem all right brian did you want to introduce yourself I don't hear anything. All right. So thank you all for that. So my one other slide <laughs> uh, until we get to the end, and I'll have some uh, commercial announcements. Um, but my other slide here is just a basic introduction to the requirements in order to install or upgrade to Monterey. And um, every time that Apple has released a new version of the Mac operating system, they have raise the bar for which Macs can actually run it and the hardware um, components needed to actually be able to use it as well. So uh, the, the, this uh, Mac OS 12 Monterey was released in November of last year, 2021. And after November, 2021, every Mac that ships will have Monterey pre-installed. So if you buy anything now, unless it's a used machine, it's going to have Monterey pre-installed. Also, Apple has two different hardware platforms. 
they have the older Intel platform, which they are still selling some models, but more and more, Apple has been transitioning to their new Apple Silicon, and they have a whole family of M1-based processors, the standard M1, the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and now the M1 Ultra, which is two M1 Maxes joined at the hip, basically to double your performance. And they've added some new hardware with the studio, but otherwise, almost all the laptops now are Apple Silicon. The iMacs are now, with the exception of the iMac Pro, are Apple Silicon. The new Apple Studio is all Apple Silicon. I think the only Mac remaining that is not fully Apple Silicon is the Mac Pro Tower, and that'll probably happen later this year. So uh, the earliest version of Mac OS X, because I know someone here was still uh, running on Mac OS X, is Mac OS 10.9. This is the earliest version of the Mac OS that you can directly upgrade to Monterey. If you are running anything earlier than 10.9, then you need to either upgrade to Mac OS 10.9 and then upgrade to Monterey, or you could back up your data using Time Machine, wipe your drive from the recovery volume, and then do a completely clean installation of Monterey. And then after that, restore your data from your time machine backup as part of the um, initial setup of the Macintosh after the installation of the operating system. But that will, uh, it's kind of a six of one, half a dozen of the other as far as the amount of time it takes uh, to do either. So your mileage may vary. Although I'm, you would likely have fewer problems during the clean installation if you're going from a much older OS. Your Mac must have at least four gigs of RAM, which should not be a problem. Most of the Macs that are shipping these days have at least eight gigabytes of memory. And I, I, I know this for anybody who's buying any Apple laptop or anything Apple Silicon at this point, buy as much RAM as you think you're gonna need because it can't be upgraded in the future. Um, especially with Apple Silicon, your Apple has something called integrated memory. That means that the RAM is part of the whole chip that makes up the, the silicon uh, processor package. Uh, the system on a chip sort of function where you have the processor, the RAM, sometimes even storage, plus all of the controlling uh, CPU architectures into one basic uh, package uh, for the whole thing. And so as such, most of the Apple Silicon, the minimum is gonna be eight. The M1 maxed out at 16. Uh, the M1 Pro and M1 Max uh, go up to at least 64 and um, potentially 128. And then the Ultra can go up as high as 128 uh, for sure. You need 26 gigabytes of storage space available on your Mac to install it. That means you must have at least that much space free on your internal hard drive. If you are upgrading from Mac OS Sierra 1012 or later, if you're upgrading from El Capitan, Mac OS 1011 or earlier, you need about 44 gigabytes. So the older you, the OS you're upgrading from, from 11 and 10 and 11 or later, the more space you're going to need. I'm going to tell you if you have less than 26 gigabytes free on your hard drive, you've got other problems that are significantly impacting your performance besides just trying to install the new OS. Um, uh, some, some of you are familiar with this, but most experts recommend 10 to 20% of your hard drive's total capacity to be free for the system to function efficiently. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is for temporary files, cache files, temporary files, and so on that are created on the fly. And the other is for virtual memory. If you exceed the amount of physical RAM, the system has a process in place where it'll swap out uh, inactive, uh, the, com inactive uh, the components of inactive apps to your hard drive temporarily to make room for active app resources. Um, and then if you have a solid state drive, it's highly recommended that you do not fill up your hard, your, your storage, if it's solid state for a couple of reasons. One, most solid state drives like most other types of media have a limited lifespan. Each cell 
in a solid state drive can only be re re rewritten to a certain number of times out of that, it becomes a dead cell. And so to extend the lifespan of solid state drives, they have something called wear leveling. What that means is that the, the operating system has an algorithm to write data into different areas of the solid state drive to spread it out, spread the load out. So you're not constantly writing and rewriting to the same cell over and over again, burning it out. And so with wear leveling, you have to have space in order to move your data around basically. And so if you fill up your hard drive, there's very little space to use for that. And then you get into the situation where you're reading and you're writing over and over again, the same stops. Some of the features of the Mac operating system, and this is true, not just in Monterey, but every earlier version of the operating system require that you have an Apple ID. And so you should have that and iCloud services enabled. Uh, Apple has a lot of options for sharing data between devices and some of the new features like the universal control and so on are based on things like uh, continuity and handoff, which again, require that you're signed in on all of the de devices that are taking advantage of this uh, with the same Apple ID. No worries, Brian, We I sort of figured that. All right. Uh, also, a lot of the features of the Mac operating system require internet access. Basically installing it requires internet an internet connection, a fairly fast one because Monterey is a 12 gigabyte download. So it's not as it's not a small download. It will take a few minutes even on a fairly fast internet connection. But all your iCloud services, obviously the web, email, all those things also require an internet connection. Now, as far as compatible Macs, you've got to be running a MacBook that's from 2015 or later a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro, or an iMac from 2015. Now the MacBook Air and the, and the MacBook Pro are early 2015 and the iMac late 2015. Mac Minis from 2014 or later, the iMac Pro from 2017 or later, Mac Pro Tower from 2013 or later, and the Mac Studio, which is a new one I don't have on here. That new Mac Studio ships with Monterey. So it's, that's the only OS that that will run. And so that's another thing I'll mention real quick. Whichever version of the Mac operating system came with your Mac, that's the earliest version of the Mac OS that will run on it. You cannot downgrade. So for example, if I bought the new Mac Studio and I decided I don't like Monterey, I want to go back to down to Big Sur, can't do it, can't downgrade. Uh, if you try, you'll run into problems. So whatever Mac operating system ship with your Mac, that is the version that is the minimum that it will run. So these are all the basic requirements. And that pretty much is the end of the slides at this point. So let me get into some of the demonstration option. Now, if you want more information about Apple's new features, and I will get to that slide, there we go. So we go to the Apple website, we go to Monterey, we have an overview, which you can look at, which goes through all the different features. And if you click on the all new features, it goes into much more detail in some of the things that we'll be talking about today. So just, uh, in fact, let me put this in the, in the um, chat here. What version of 12 is currently available? Hold on, I will give you that information. There you go. So if I go to my Apple menu, because they just updated that a couple of days ago. So under the about this Mac, it'll tell you what you were running. So right now, oh, well, I'm running the 12.4 beta on this uh, particular machine. Uh, the, the current version is 12.3.1, 12.3.1. That is the most current version of Monterey. So if some things don't work, I'm running a beta. <laughs> All right. So one of the big things that Apple has been working on has been integrating, or not so, uh, not so integrating in some ways, but building bridges between all the devices and having communication. And we're gonna dive into that a little bit more. The first thing I wanna show you is just a fun thing. 
And that is an advanced option in the Maps app. So they updated the Maps app. They've got this new interactive globe feature. So I'm going to launch Maps. And this is just a, a fun thing. So every time, the first time you launch an app, it gives you a what's new in a Maps option. So they've got some newer features like nearby transit. So based on your location, either through Wi-Fi or if you're using a, an iOS device or iPadOS device through um, the cell GPS, you can get more ideas about nearby transit. They've got uh, new place cards to make it easier to learn about, interact with certain places, improve search. But one of the really cool things is the interactive globe feature of the Maps app. So I make this a little bit bigger here. Now to get to the globe, you have to zoom out. So I have to just zoom completely out. Keep going, keep going. Eventually, oops, you get to the globe. Come on. Well, supposedly. Interesting. It's not, and this, this is just part of the beta. Well, supposedly it zoomed completely out and you got there. So much fun when a demo fails. Uh. Interesting. Let me check something real quick. I apologize. Uh, so this might be a beta thing because it is working on my other computer. So let me screen share over to my other computer where is, I have another. So this is a, it might be the version of the computer. Uh, this is a 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro. And I've also got a 14 inch uh, MacBook Pro uh, Apple Silicon. This is an Intel. Um, See, I'm in a new Definder window. This is what happens when you work with beta software. All right, so I got two screens here, so that's why we're seeing that really big. Uh, so here is the globe. So if you completely zoom out, you've got this interactive globe and you can just spin anywhere that you want uh, on the planet. And when you get somewhere that you want to see, you can just zoom into that location just by double clicking. But it's, a, it's nice, it's like having the big globe in your office, you know, you could spin and, and, and and wait for something to show up. But yeah, that's more or less what the globe looks like. So again, you just zoom completely out. And again, I'm not sure why that's not working on the evidence, but uh, yeah, you spin around just like a regular globe and see whatever you want. Uh, you can spin in any direction. And then just to just zoom in normally or double click on anywhere to see a particular element that you want to see. And I'll give you more information about that particular uh, option. Can you screen record map? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, you're recording this. If you're recording the screen, I mean, you're recording pretty much everything that's happening on the screen. So you could go start screen recording. You could go full screen with the map app. So if I'm um, can't do it because I'm recording the, the presentation. But if I go back to maps. Once I've got the screen recording on, if I don't want to see anything else but the maps, I could go full screen with that. 
and just view that information. Then I can I can hide this. Um, and just see what my map stuff is. So you could zoom around and you could zoom in and, and animate all of that. So you can get that sort of Google Earth kind of zoom in to a specific location if you know exactly where you want. So yeah, you can absolutely go ahead and, and screen that particular option. So that's just kind of a fun thing uh, to play with there. Um, but as I said, Apple has all these really cool features that are based on continuity and handoff. And what that means is essentially I can share documents that I'm working with between my devices. It allows my, my, I can make phone calls from my computer through my phone if it's nearby. I can start a document on one device and then keep editing it on another. So I could start a document at one point on my computer and I could finish it on my phone and so on. And they're taking it even further with things like uh, screen sharing. Now, prior to Mac OS Monterey, if you wanted to display your computer screen on your TV, you needed an Apple TV device connected to your TV. And your Apple TV is an AirPlay receiver. And you can simply go to the AirPlay menu in the menu bar and choose, in this case, I've got my, my um, uh, control here, uh, control center. I can go to the display options and show those options there. But you could essentially, where is that screen sharing feature? Oh, here we go, screen mirroring. I can click on that and I can, I can mirror to my Apple TV. You can see I've got a TV, Apple TV connected to my network. And um, so on, there's got a family room and I've got a living room. Now I actually have a newer TV. I can actually do that as an AirPlay receiver and I go right to that. But here I can, I can go to this computer. I can, I can mirror my display on this computer to any other computer that's running model array. Uh, in addition, I can do the same thing with a phone or a tablet. Um, so this, I've got a, a phone here. To know, this is my older iPhone 6. But again, if I want to display the screen of this device on my computer, I just have to go to the control center, go to the screen mirroring. And hmm, uh, my computer is not showing up, interestingly enough. Uh, but it might be an older device. Let me check my other phone. Or better yet, let me bring over my tablet. Let's see if this is my. Have I called this? Oh, Mac O one, so this should show up. Okay, why is it not showing up? So naturally, when I want to do a demo, it's not working. Okay. Let me do one thing real quick here. Okay. I'm going to disconnect my larger display. I can screen share over for this. Okay. Disconnect. All right. So let me screen share over to my other computer. So 
So this is standard screen sharing. Oops. All right, so I should be able to send my, my iPad to that. There we go. So there's my iPad. So I can see what's going on on my iPad. I can search the web and do anything else that I want to do. And it will recognize orientation. And I'm not, this is just sending it right to my computer display. This is not anything I need to do. In earlier versions of the Mac OS, you had to have other software that is a program called the Reflector that would do this feature where you'd able, be able to mirror your display onto another computer. Now with Monterey and iOS 15, you don't need to do that anymore. It'll go right to the display. So if I turn this off, then that will go away just like that. So that, in order to do that, you've got to be, um, again, running the same Apple ID. You've got to be running at least 12.3 uh, on, your, on your Mac and iOS 15.4 on your iOS devices. So again, you could, if you wanted to screen record something off of an, an iPad or an iPhone while you're doing a demo, you could actually do that as an option. And we're going to quit this. Now, related to that, we have um, a thing called uh, FaceTime SharePlay. And with FaceTime SharePlay, you can have a family night or friend, friendly get together, even in, in the era of COVID, where we're not able to get together physically as much as we'd like. So, with FaceTime, what you need to do is turn on FaceTime. Oops. There we go. So I've got FaceTime running, and if I get my phone and initiate a FaceTime session from that, we'll see how this works. This will go crazy in a second because I have a bunch of devices connected to my account. <laughs> That's interesting. Going to everyone but this device. Hold on, let me see how I'm logged in. Which account am I logged in on here? Okay. So naturally it's not working on this computer. Let me go ahead and screen share again. Okay. Okay, so now I'll get my phone and turn on FaceTime. Of course, it wants to do every other device, but this one. Okay. It's funny because this is working. This was working before. Of course. Okay, well, stop that. To mute everything. Okay, so why are you not showing up on here? 
not available for FaceTime. Interesting. Okay. Okay, we are going to try something else here. There we go. Why am I not available for FaceTime? On every other device, it's showing up. It's funny because I tested this before class. It was working, so I'm not sure. And this has to do with... Um... Stop. Okay, let me try this. We're going to try one more time and then we'll move on to the next thing. I apologize. Uh, I'm not sure what's why it's not working, but it's not. Um, but let me explain SharePlay. Basically, once you connect with a FaceTime session, one-on-one -on -one or multiple, you can go to any app, uh, like your music app, your video app, and so on, and actually share your content. I mean, you could now... If you have a subscription service like Hulu or Netflix or, or Pluto TV and so on, you all have to be, um, you have to all have an account with that service and you have to access to the same content. So the same music, the same movies, but you could actually share movies and so forth. And you can even share your screen, which is the what I was going to try demoing. And like I said, I tried this before the class started and it was working fine. So I'm not sure why. It is not working. So let me check. Let me go to a couple of other things and then we will we'll come back to this uh, if we have time later on. Um, but like I said, we can airplay a screen of a device, another Mac, another iPad, or another to our, to our main screen if we want to do a demo or view content that way. Uh, another feature is something called shared with you. So if you were to text somebody a message or if someone were to text you a message uh, let me just check my apple id here okay let's go ahead and do that Trying to sign in with my password on my device here.
I'm just doing a reset on that. Um, if you were to text somebody from your phone or tablet or someone else was to text you, then in your apps, you'll now have a new shared with section where you'll see the image or the graphic or the um, other element that you want to see. So if I were to go say, open up the messages app and someone had sent me a, a, a an image via the messages app. Oops, hold on. I was trying to get to sign in. Uh, like I said, you'd have a section. This would appear in other sections too, like Safari would display uh, content. So, so shared with you is a new option. So that'll appear in your sidebar. I don't think I've got anything shared yet. So I'm gonna hopefully send something from one of my other devices here. All right, so let me go to the chat. And send a message with an image. Let me add a photo for my camera. Okay, so I've sent that. So that has appeared on all my other devices. So here we go, I've got that. And so these are all the photos that I've set, we are connected, let's see. So there's that picture. We sent. And uh, we can send websites and stuff like that. Um, so I go back here and I'll send a link to a website. Okay, so that should show up here in a second or two. There we go, there's the website. So now again, if I launch Safari, and I go to my 
do here is shared with you will show anything that was shared that link should eventually show up. So when people text you things through the messages app, pictures, links, documents, then other apps like the Safari or appropriate apps, the photos app, the Safari app, they'll have a share with you section that you have access to that'll display just those elements that were shared with you as a way of keeping track of all these different options and, and giving you that access. I'm not sure why it's not showing up yet. Um, but that would be part of that option as well. Okay. Uh, another new feature, we can add tags to notes. Now tags are a little bit of metadata. <laughs> hey, like I said, I tested that, that FaceTime share play feature be before this class started and it worked fine. And of course, as soon as you do a demo, it says, no, I don't feel it. So I will, I will work on that. And the next time we do this webinar, you're welcome to come back and I should have it fixed by then. So yeah, no, things happen no matter what. All right, so let me bring up the notes app. So you can organize your notes with tags. So tags are a type of metadata that are part of the Mac OS so that you can easily locate things in the file system. So if I wanted to do a search for something, I could actually search for um, say uh, PDF. I can search for kind or file name, or if I do them see Mac OS, I actually have tags. So I can search for anything that is flagged with the Mac OS tag. And you can see I have a whole bunch of different things here on my system that are flagged with the Mac OS tag. So a tag is just a way of identifying or signing keyword metadata to your documents and so forth. You can do that now within the notes app. So as you write your notes here, I could say, I wanna write a, uh, a new note. Now, within the note, I can add tags. So I could just start with hashtag, and then I can use an existing one, like here's webinar. I, have a, I plugged in there, and I could type in a hashtag macOS, and that'll add that. If I can type a, a completely new tag if I want, and let's say uh, trivia. And so I'm adding tags, and over here on the left in the sidebar of the notes app, I've got a new tag section. And so I could say, okay, so if I'm working on a project and I'm getting notes from people, I can tag these notes with specific references and I can quickly jump to those notes which have that tag. So this is the only note which has a trivia. Now I can combine them as well. So I could say uh, webinar and Mac OS, and that'll show me all of the notes I have in the notes app that meet that criteria that are both uh, Mac OS and webinar. So it makes it easier to organize your notes, especially if you're doing a lot of different um, note options or from different places and different options. And that allows you to easily organize notes that you've gathered or typed in different sections or different parts of your notes or different folders of your notes for different reasons. It makes it easier to, to get them all together and view all of that content. Now we also have a quick notes function, which on most devices you'd simply uh, on the lower left corner of your screen, you would simply bring it up and you have a quick note option. For some reason it's not working here. So we will do the, the normal thing and that is Google it. So I gotta hide these controls, sorry.
Okay, so. So that brings up a quick note. So it brings up a new note. I can type this in. And like it said, in some situations, you're supposed to be able to just do it right from the lower edge of the screen. And that adds that note to your existing. So here you have just your quick notes. Let me turn off my tags. So all your quick notes appear up here uh, as you're doing that. So if I quit the notes app completely and then just bring up the keyboard shortcut, that brings up that quick note. And I can add to the existing quick notes. So if you want to quickly jot down a note, or let's say if I go to a website and I'm doing research on C anemones. Then I just grab some information and just drag that into, whoops. Into my quick note, just like that, and then close that. So I can do that without having the notes app even open and just add data to my notes very easily, very quickly without having to bring up the entire notes app and do that. So that quick notes function, very simple, very easy to work with. Um, another really cool feature, live text. So there's a couple of ways that you can access that. And let me take a picture of some text. So if I wanted to, I could, um, let me take a picture of something that's textual, hold on. Let's see what I've got in my photos app here. I might already have some text. But basically with live text, you can treat text in a photo like it was text in any other text document, meaning that I could um, in fact, let me let me airdrop a photo over here. Force this to quit. Okay, so we're going to the photos app over here. We'll see if this is the right MacBook Pro. Okay, so I got that photo. Let me add that to the Photos app. Put that photo. Downloads. There we go. So I got this photo. And with live photos, you'll get an icon that should appear like in the lower right. 
that lets you go ahead and actually select the text. You can, I'm doing it right now. I'm selecting this text. Let me put that in my quick note here. So that's an image. And I'm actually selecting the text in the image. So if I wanted to, see I get my cursor just like a regular text cursor, copy that. Access my quick note, paste that in my quick note. So that'll work with any image that you have already taken, but you can also do it from a camera. So if you want to import from a device, um, there's an option to, to like, um, well, I'm in a text document, I can import an image, but I can do live text within the camera of my phone or my tablet. Uh, or even my computer. So with live text, and again, you've got to be running in 12.3 and uh, for your iOS or iPad OS OS uh, 15.4 uh, to do this, but it allows you that. Now, if you had, say, text that was in a different language, uh, so let me go to Safari and let me go to uh, Telemundo. They're a Spanish language website. I'll just take a screenshot of their screen. Here we go. So we've got some text here. I'll just take a screenshot of this. Oops. Try that again. All right. So now to see where my screenshots are going, hold on, command shift five. For those of you who don't know, uh, you can take a screenshot on the Mac and there's a number of different ways to do that. Command shift three will take a screenshot of the entire screen. Command shift four, will allow you to take a screenshot of a portion of the screen. If you want a specific window, Command Shift 4 and then the space bar, if I did this, Command Shift 4, and then hit the space bar, I can then click on a specific window and just take a screenshot of that window. Uh, Command Shift 5 gives you all these controls. So I can take, again, capture my screen, a selected window, a portion of the screen. I can also capture video. And under my options, I can choose things like where uh, my, uh, my my screenshots go. Right now, they're going to my pictures folder. Here we go, pictures. So I've got uh, this screenshot here that I just took. Let me go ahead and you know, import that into the Photos app. So let me, Photos. import that into my photos here. There we go. So now I've got this. And again, I want to um, information about that so I can eventually I should be able to just click on this live text it. Come on. There we go. Select that text, right click on it and choose look up or translate. So we'll go through the translation process. So now it'll translate that into whatever language. So there's like eight different languages that are currently supported. So that still works pretty well. All right. So live text allows you a lot of options for doing uh, text editing, pulling text from images directly into your documents. So another big uh, feature that Apple put together, and I'm going to make sure I can do this now because let me see if I can put my iPad screen up on this computer here. 
Yeah, I'm not sure why this is not showing up. I will have to do this on my other computer. So let me put this on my other computer there. Uh, but universal control, in fact, let me just turn stop mirroring for a second. So with universal control, I can use the mouse and keyboard of any uh, Mac on any up to two other devices. So I have a Mac, a Mac, and a tablet together. And I could actually move to the edge of my screen and access that. To turn this on, you have to go to System Preferences. And you have to go to the Display Preferences. Where are Display Preferences? Let me go displays. And in the displays, you've got a universal, universal control option here. And you can say, allow your pointer and keyboard to move between any near my Mac or iPad. Notice that this was a feature that was announced back in uh, the WWDC in 2021. And when the Apple first released Mac OS 12, Monterey did not make the cut for final features. It was released recently in the 12.3 update. So you gotta be running at least 12.3 on your Mac and 15.4 on your iOS devices. So you can push to the edge of the display. So I could go right to the edge of the display here or on my other monitor here, and it would go to uh, a nearby device. Which device have I got running here? Cause it, is, it went to my device. And that will allow you to control that device with your keyboard or mouse. And so you can actually see here, my first generation iPad Pro. <laughs> yeah, I have a first gen 12 inch iPad Pro. I've got a, there we go. So you can see it actually shows up because you could use it as a as a whole other display in a sense. If I go to the edge here, oops. It goes to that. Yep, it does. So let me see if I can mirror this display on my screen. That's funny, it still doesn't show up. So it does actually go over. So I can mirror this display to my other computer. Hold on. And we can screen share that. Okay. So let me turn on screen sharing real quick. A long way to go to get there, but it does work. Okay, so there's my iPad. I'm gonna move my mouse all the way over to the second screen. And you can see now that little, little circular cursor that's running around. That is essentially my mouse. For my or my trackpad on this computer on my iPad. So if I want to launch an app, I can go down into the dock. I can go anywhere on my screen here. Now uh, let's see. Let me find. So here's the notes app. And so here I'm going to go down into the note and click. Oops. It's weirding out here. I got two things, too many things going on. So I can click 
somewhere in here. And now I can just use my keyboard on my computer and just type. Yeah, you know, interesting. It's not. Come on. Well, the cursor's moving around. It should be typing also. I'm not sure why it's not typing. But basically, again, I don't know if it's a lag or something like that. But essentially, you could take, again, it's a beta uh, app. But you could move the mouse over and launch apps and do anything you with the mouse and the keyboard. You could use keyboard shortcuts and all that stuff. So universal control works across multiple devices. They all have to be signed in with the same Apple ID. Basically, they've got to be within 30 feet at Bluetooth. So you got to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled. Does it work with cursive writing? Uh, well, if the app works with cursive writing, but you can only do that from the tablet side. Oh, you mean the, the live text feature? It's supposed to. Uh, we can actually test that if you want. Let me get out of this. So I get my mouse back all the way to the side here and I'll turn off screen sharing. So let me write something in cursive of which I'm terrible. Let's see. Well, actually we can just use my notes. So let me take a picture of my notes. Get a camera here for my iPad. Okay. That photo, let me share that with my computer. Okay, so if I go to downloads. There's that. Uh, so let me go ahead and put that into the, um, the photos app. Again, shared with you in photos. So if anything has been shared with you, it'll show up there. Let me go ahead and drag this into here. There we go. We'll see if it recognizes it. Oops. It's supposed to, it should be able to recognize this also. There we go. So it's grabbing text it can, it can recognize. I'll we'll copy that and let's paste that into our quick notes. It's working. So I have very horrible handwriting, so I'm surprised it got as much of that as it did, but it will work also with cursive writing. So it will, it will do recognition on that. My guess is you're going to have to be online for some of that because it's going to have to go to Apple's um, data centers to make that work. All right, one major, one last major thing to talk about in this session, and I'll open it up to questions. That is shortcuts. So this has been a part of the Mac, uh, the iOS, iPad OS for a while. It's now a part of the Mac OS. And what shortcuts are, are a way to quickly and easily create um, icons that will perform specific tasks.
Let me make sure I've got the shortcuts app here. I don't know why this is tough. behaving so slowly. There we go. There we go. So here's the shortcuts app. And you get all your shortcuts, you get some starter shortcuts. And so what these do basically is they allow you to perform a specific tasks. So this will bring up the last voice memo that you did. If I click on that uh, and run it, it will perform that task. The last voice memo So launch voice memos It'll load the last voice memo uh, that we put together. So I don't have any, I don't have any voice memos in here because they're all on my other devices, but let me go ahead last. So the text last image, so I could bring that up. It would grab the last image, launch the messages app and allow me to text that image. So you got some pre-built options here, but I can create uh, my own shortcuts. If I want to add a shortcut, I simply click on the plus button here. And now I can generate shortcuts. And so I can say, um, I've been looking for a specific app. Let's say I want to open up a new pages document with a single uh, click here. So I can say pages. It'll show all the things for the pages app. I've also got control. So I got app options. So here's pages. It'll show me all the options for pages. I can say create document. I can rename this. Okay. So that's what that's going to do. I've got controls here for um, performing different functions. Uh, Set up, say, and allow shortcut to access pages. Right. Options for importing details. And I can even share this with other devices. Copy the iCloud link, airdrop it, put it in notes, and so on. And so now if I go back to my shortcuts, I can close this. Here's my create pages shortcuts. I can launch, click on that and should launch pages and then create a new document right out of the box. So shortcuts are basically, it's kind of a visual object oriented sort of programming or scripting feature that allows you to simplify or automate certain tasks and they can be as complex as necessary, as long as you have the right attributes, or they can be as simple as you want. Like this is just a single one-click thing. I can now quickly open up uh, the Pages app and open up a new document. So depending on uh, your device, you can share these with other devices. So I could have this to create Pages uh, uh, shortcut uh, available to me in my iPhone or my tablet as well. So again, you can show all your shortcuts. You got quick actions, you got 
items to the menu bar, so you had shortcuts, run them right to the menu bar. So again, if I want to do something right for the menu bar, I can set up the actions that I want, open app, play music, text, so on. Uh, for different categories are for, for specific apps. I can list and show the apps. I calculate expression, calculate a number. So there's a lot of things you can do with this uh, with a little time and, and effort. Uh, you can really make it easier to do a wide variety of tasks. And I mean, the shortcuts functionality is incredibly easy. And it also taps into automator workflows. So you can convert any, autom if you've done anything with automator, you can convert automated workflows to shortcuts and it does tie into Apple script as well uh, for some of those options. All right. So those were the main things that I had on my notes to share with you. Some of the demos went okay. Some of the demos didn't work as well as we would have hoped. Let me jump back to uh, the slides real quick. So just a couple of things. First off, we're going to open it up for questions in a moment. So if there's anything else that you want to talk about. Um, as a attendee at this webinar, you are now a alumni of the FMC training program. And uh, once you fill out the evaluation for the webinar, and I'll give you the information about that in just a moment. I'll put the link up and everything uh, for that. Uh, if you go to our website, fmctraining.com, you can browse for other courses. And I'd be, um, now that you've gotten a taste of some of the things in Monterey, we do offer, uh, we don't offer a Monterey course yet. Um, Apple still has not recertified all of all the trainers. So we're still waiting for that for recertification. We do have Big Sur classes available. Currently, we're hoping to have Monterey classes up and running fairly soon. So keep your eye on that. We also have partnerships with uh, organizations like Dell. So if you're looking for like I'm running one of the monitors I'm running here uh, on this computer for holding secondary information uh, while we're doing this is a Dell monitor. In fact, if I go to about this Mac and go to the display section, you can see it's a Dell uh, monitor that I'm actually running. So they do make good equipment. Uh, and you can get more information about our partnership with Dell and any discounts on merchandise by going to dell.com forward slash FMC training. There's also a video that you can watch at Vimeo. If you go to vimeo.com forward slash 418-046-352. We also have a partnership with a company called Ceremonic. If you are doing podcasts, webcasts, video streaming, even just basic video recording and editing. Ceremonic provides a variety of equipment to assist you in that endeavor. So they have stands, clamps, if you're using your phone or your tablet as a camera, uh, they've got backgrounds, uh, they've got microphones, they've got headsets, they've got a variety of kit that you can use if you're blogging, video blogging, streaming, uh, live streaming or uh, podcasting, however you're, whatever you're doing that relates to video and audio uh, equipment, uh, Ceremonic will help provide that for you. So if you can find out more by going to ceremonicusa.com and we have a discount, if you use the code VIP support 20, you can get a 20% discount on some of their equipment there. So that's that. Um, let me do one thing real quick here. Let me see if I got the, the link for the presentation there. Nope, hold on. Uh, class. All right, I'm gonna put all of this, oops. To change this thing though.
I'm going to put all this in the chat. Grab that and paste it over here. Put that to everybody. All right, so in the chat, you've got the link to the uh, evaluation uh, for that. Uh, the class is what's new in macOS Monterey. Today's the date. I am your instructor. The location is online. So you can go ahead and fill that out. You'll get an email following up later uh, about the webinar. This webinar has also been recorded. So it'll take about a week. Uh, well, they edit out anything that they want to edit out and get it ready. And so you should receive via email, you should receive a link to view this online if you want to review anything. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you want more detail about a lot of these different elements, if you go to um, apple.com, I put that link in the in the chat earlier, so you should have the link to this. Um, but if you go to the all new features option here, it goes into a lot more detail into all of the different things that we covered, plus a few other things that we did not cover. So first, I want to thank you for attending our webinar, and I hope that you're walking out of here with a little bit more knowledge about um, Monterey. I urge you <laughs> to play with that share play option. I'm going to work with a little bit more we'll the next time we do this webinar we'll hopefully we'll have a better option for demoing that otherwise again thank you very much for attending at this point in time are there any other questions about mac os monterey uh, anything else that i could show you or answer before you guys head out i'm more than happy to answer any additional questions or show you anything else You're all very welcome. I know we went a little bit longer than we said, <laughs> but that's fine. I'm, I'm again, I'm happy to to answer any questions that you might have before you walk out of here. Otherwise, uh, you are free to go. Thanks once again for attending, and enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks, James. Great stuff. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye. That's the, that's the thing with a live show. When it works, it works. And when it doesn't work, it's comedy. How does it work with FCPX? Uh, it should work fine. Uh, let me see if I've got Final Cut up on this system here. I think I've got the, uh, the current version. Might take a minute to load. It's a little bit slower. This is an old, older Intel based system. There it is. It is coming up. It should work fine. And I, I have noticed on my, my Apple Silicon based Mac, the rendering is a lot faster. Uh, one of the reasons for that is you've got, uh, I've got, the, I've got the, the Max on mine and it's got, I think four engines for rendering, uh, for hardware rendering MPEG video. So I've got the current version 1062. And the first thing you're going to notice, if you if you also run a lot of audio plugins, the startup will take a little bit longer because it's got to go through and evaluate all the plugins. And if you've got any older plugins, uh, you may run into problems. So they've got some new features here. Uh, they've got some new AI features. Uh, they've got duplicate clip detection, so it can tell you right away if you've got duplicate clips in your footage. Voice isolation again to help cut out background noise. That can be helpful if you're doing uh, work with video that's been recorded uh, on site and you didn't have, you got like wind and other background noises. And of course, they've optimized it for the new Studio Mac. And they've got a whole full feature list there. Uh, the first time you load it, any old libraries will have to be updated. So that could take a minute or two. 
uh, depending on how much content that you had. So I don't know what I've got in here. I've got a project with no footage. Well, I can import something. You can actually, you can actually record footage right from your camera. Oh, something else that's new. This is uh, part of the uh, privacy features of the new Mac operating system. This was just goes back, uh, I think, to Catalina. But basically, anytime an app wants to access things like the camera or the microphone, it's going to ask you first. And in most cases, you're going to say, OK. Same thing with the microphone. If it ever comes up and it's not OK, then you can um, say refuse that. Or you can turn it off. I'll show that in a second. So, here we're going to go ahead and just uh, record some footage of me saying something like this. And that'll generate a clip. And so now, hey, what's happening? We're doing this for you. So now I should have a couple of clips. favorites oh that's something else the um the filtering up here is persistent means if you select a option for filtering it remains active even if you quit and relaunch the app you have to actively choose the options here that's also for true for the search filtering so if you're looking if you do certain things like if you've tagged your footage and things like that it's persistent and so that's going to happen as well. So here again, we've got our options for um, selecting footage and then adding that to the timeline to our current project. OK. Like that. And again, we can do the same thing here and just mark it in and out and uh, edit that into the clip play it back, I can apply my filter. So, so it works fine. So Monterey doesn't have any problems, especially with the current version of Final Cut. So if you're using it, uh, the big thing you're going to want to make sure is you've got backups of all your current stuff, because once you bring it up to Monterey, once you um, load the new version of Final Cut, your projects will be converted. And you will probably not be able to use them in any older versions. So if you're planning to use Final Cut Pro and you have multiple workstations, you're going to want to upgrade it on all the workstations so that you're all, especially if you're sharing projects like on a NAS, then you're going to want to be able to access all the, all the, the projects on all your devices. So that'd be the other thing is just making sure that it is up to date on all your systems. All right. Anybody else have any other questions? Excitement, thrills, danger. <laughs> All right. Well, if nobody else has anything, I'll thank the remaining uh, members of our group here for joining us and enjoy the rest of your week.